take five. I will get this red. I will go across the street to exercise. But I dug this out to read because Lisa said she wanted a vlog and I thought this would be a cool thing to read. One of the poems in it. And, um, and since it's the beginning of Rosh Hashanah, when the sun sets, I thought reading from um, a book by a Jewish poet would be kind of cool. Um, Emily Warren is somebody I took a poetry workshop from way back in the late 80s, early 90s from in Anacortes, Washington. Uh, she got her MFA at the University of Washington. And I really learned a lot. It was a long time ago, but I still think about some of the things that we discussed in that class. Uh, one of the things I appreciate, appreciate about Emily Warren is that she, in this book of poetry, she talks about how she's trying to reintegrate herself as a feminist and a whole woman with her belief system to make her a whole person. And since I come from a Southern Baptist background, a lot of times I find myself trying to do the same thing. So I kind of resonate with some of what she's trying to do in her poetry. Um, the poem that I'm going to read today is called Trouble. And it's about Emily Warren meeting Esther and feeling whole because she's met Esther. Esther from the Old Testament. Or any Esther, probably. Trouble. Began in trouble. Began in pasting the Detroit desert until I found Esther pacing on the boundary. She knew God. Told me not to worry that the ways I'd found to survive were good. Then we compared manna. Whatever you can imagine, like the law says, Esther observed the laws. She knew them inside out for each day of the week, but there were homemade flaws, especially on Shabbos. I watched her stare right into the candle flame without hiding her face. When she tossed the kiddush wine into her mouth, it was in celebration of her rebel ways. And God, she said, didn't blink. Then I knew Esther was as great as God, because her elaborate, beautiful offerings made her unafraid. Esther is my ho hope and comfort, she would laugh. Yet I know she has lived through God's terror. She doesn't take anyone lightly, not even me. Not even my small fears that grow wide and blank as the Midwest sky. Impossible to speak out against them, but Esther does. Then she dances in her stocky, certain body. A dance you would do in a kitchen, careful not to break the dishes or bang the pots, but knowing if they break, they break. She told me once that she too was afraid, but that won't stop her dancing. Knowing that helps, but I still cry out and become brittle when the dogs bark or the house creaks. And I sleep facing the door, ready to greet God the stranger. Oh, what can anchor Esther to earth, to her large bowl of sifting memories, to 5,000 years of Jewish graves, to the notion of authority in a random universe, if not for caring, if not for my caring for Esther's drifting spirit, for her separated self? How could Esther have found her way back to her body? How could she have kept from floating through the ceiling? How could she have hoped to be whole, if not for my containing Esther's absolute terror as she rose? Anyway, that's take five. I think we're going to quit at that. I'm sorry I flubbed a couple of things, but this is one of my favorite poets, if you can find her. I'm not sure how much more she published after this, but I think she's a fantastic poet. And her name is Emily Warren, and this is called The Book of Esther. Thank you, and have a great weekend.